Hello friends, welcome to Science Land. I'm Nikita and today I'm going to talk about antigenic drift. Now, antigenic drift, it's a kind of genetic variation which is also known as antigenic variation. So, before starting the main process, we need to know certain terms involved in it. So, let's assume we have an antigen. Any foreign substance which invokes an immune response is known as antigen. Once it is inside a human body, it will initiate an immune response. After the human body is infected with an antigen, the human body would not sit idle. It will start producing neutralizing bodies, antibodies. Okay, so this red area that is known as an antibody now not the entire antigen will be the target of this antibody it is a particular region called as epitope epitope will react against the paratope paratope is on the antibody and epitope is on antigen epitope is also known as antigenic determinant and it will be given by a particular sequence so let's assume we have the sequence for this epitope aagc any change any variation in this particular sequence or rather an antigenic sequence is known as antigenic variation so it can be a point mutation or it can be any other type of mutation which will change the epitope drastically or it will change to a very negligible difference now two things to remember antigenic variation can be in any microorganism it can be in trypanosomas it can be in malarian parasites it can be in viruses anywhere now this antigenic variation there are two types of it one is antigenic drift one is antigenic shift today we are going to talk about antigenic drift antigenic drift it's a kind of genetic variation which occurs in viruses only to be more specific it occurs the most in influenza virus a and to a lesser extent influenza virus b it has not been documented to occur in influenza virus type c but always remember the antigenic drift occurs in both influenza a and b it's a little different in antigenic shift which is another process so before starting the definition we'll understand what is antigenic drift diagrammatically this is my influenza virus it has two surface antigens the blue one is known as ha hemagglutinin the red one is known as na neuraminidase influenza virus is an rna virus it has a single stranded genome the blue part codes for the ha and the na is encoded by this red color genome ha or hemagglutinin is required to get an entry into the host's epithelial cells and na is required when the virions are budding out from the host cell so these two are the most important antigens of this virus now we consider first person this person gets infected by this virus strain luckily this person has the antibody against this virus so the epitope and the paratope of the antibody will react against each other and the antibody will be successful in neutralizing this virus epitope and paratope is always in lock and key mechanism this antibody will be very specific to this antigen so this person won't be getting any disease now this virus is very upset that he was not able to infect that person he further undergoes a point mutation there is this point mutation in the ha gene but it is not in the place where the epitope sequence is there so what happens is the blue ha gene becomes green ha gene but since the mutation or the point mutation is not in the epitope sequence the antigenic determinant or the epitope has remained the same now this person also has the antibody so even when the virus has changed a little bit the antibody neutralized the virus such that it didn't gain an entry into the host cell and the person was healthy enough now there is one major thing to remember the second person had the antibody against this virus which was already mutated once the antibody was of the original strain so it gave the protection against the mutated version of the original strain this is known as cross 
protection now the virus is really upset because every time it is undergoing mutation the antibody is already present in the host population how will it infect people now this virus now is changing its trick it will undergo again a point mutation but this time the mutation will be essentially in the sequence which is related to epitope what happened the triangular epitope changed into the crown structure epitope so in this third person the antibody is essentially of the previous virus very specific to this triangular epitope but now virus's epitope has changed so there will be no reaction so what will happen the virus will infect this particular person so what happened is gradually this original strain changed the sequence such that the structure of the epitope changed completely and it was able to infect people at one point of time so this is the meaning of antigenic drift let's see the definition of it it is a gradual sequence change in the epitope of the virus occurring regularly at frequent intervals basically it's accumulation of minor changes which is mostly a point mutation in the sequences related to epitope this occurs often and not that it is irregular it will change such that it will lead to epidemics and not pandemics so this was the initial strain it changed a little bit and then the epitope drastically changed now certain things to remember in this this original strain when you sequence it and this strain when you sequence it it will be very closely related to each other on a phylogenetic tree the location will be very close to one another but this and this virus will be a little far on a phylogenetic tree because essentially the sequence of the epitope has changed it will be related to this virus but it will be a little far from the original strain because the the structure of epitope has changed antigenic drift is a result of mutation and selection now this mutation and selection is influenced by one main characteristic which is the antibodies of this particular virus are present in the host population so the virus will never be able to infect that particular immune population and hence it has to change such that it can easily infect those immune people because the antibody will ultimately fail to stop this virus from infecting this is the main characteristic of antigenic drift now that we have studied what is antigenic drift we need to know what are the consequences of this process we'll assume a situation wherein we have a flu vaccine this vaccine consists of two influenza a strains and one influenza b strain this is given to this person he develops an antibody for these particular strains if the same strains infect the person the immunity is always there the antibody will neutralize that particular strain of virus but on a rare occasion these strains undergo a point mutation or rather antigenic drift and the epitope has changed into this so what will happen the existing antibody will no longer be effective against this particular strain ultimately two things will happen loss of immunity in that particular person and the vaccine mismatch because the vaccine was designed for these strains it will be no longer effective against this particular mutated version of this strain and that's the main reason why flu shots are redesigned every year again and again this intelligent virus keeps changing little and little and you need to get shots every year and it is also a reason why one gets flu more than once in a lifetime so that's it that is what antigenic drift is thank you so much for watching bye bye